It's Friday, and for me that means no statics. We're still doing something for statics, but no training. The rest of the weighted calisthenics, rest of the front lever, and rest of the planche. While I'm doing some sets for prehab and mobility, let's talk about weak wrists and wrist pain. So a lot of people get wrist pain when they first start with like the handstands. They just start with exercises where their wrists for the first time are flat to the, to the ground. And uh, with doing a lot of push-ups, with doing handstands, the pressure on the wrist just increases. And ultimately, when it comes down to this, the solution for it is volume control. This means you have to increase the load that you put on your wrists slowly over time. If you already arrive at the point where the wrists are overloaded and you get pain, your job will be to find out what it actually is that is causing that pain. Is it too much, too much volume, too many sets, too many exercises? Is it a form mistake? For example, maybe you're doing handstands and you're not realizing that your handstand doesn't look like this, but it actually looks like this all the time. And you're leaning forward a lot, putting a lot more pressure on these wrists all the time. In that case, of course, it's a form mistake, but, but you're actually going to be lucky because just record yourself, figure out the issue, record yourself from the side. Maybe you see it, then you know exactly what you need to do. Fix that problem. Then you're going to have much less pressure on your wrists. And that is already, that might already be enough to heal it. If you're doing everything correct, then you're probably just doing too many exercises, pushed for progress too fast, wanted it too fast and you need to scale it down a little bit. Identifying pain is important. Do you have it all the time or do you have it on certain exercises? If you have it all the time, rest completely for a week until that's gone and you slowly start to bring in exercises again. If you have it only in certain exercises, leave these out for a week until you can do one set that is pain-free. Then you slowly start to implement it again. With all that being said, that is the principle of volume control, there are still things you can do outside of that to help strengthen those wrists, prevent injury if you don't have it already, and make recovery from injuries a bit faster and a bit easier. Let me show you. One, one very simple thing you can do, and you can do this with a, with a small weight, just like this, or with a band, is wrist extensions. Essentially, you want to grab this, put your arm on here so that you're not going all over the place, but it's actually locked in place, and you're doing wrist extensions. The thing why this is important is because in calisthenics we do a lot of grip training. We're gripping the bar and pull-ups and shit. But these extensors, so the muscle group on the opposite side, which is supposed to give you stability, it's not very active and is usually underdeveloped. Another way you can use this, and sorry, this is really chalked up because <laughs> it was in my drawer in the same area with the chalk. And this is not a sponsorship, but you can get something like this that lets you put your individual fingers in there. This is for the people that have like serious issues, like I, for example, had in the past. You put your individual fingers in here. You have different strength that you can use and then you can use that entire thing to strengthen the fingers. This is what a lot of people do that train grips um, as a way to bring balance again and keep the muscle groups balanced. Besides that, wrist stability is also something you can train really well with a small dumbbell. If you just take this and you do a slow and controlled motion of radial abduction or deviation, I think it is called in English, and the opposite, ulna deviation. For all of these exercises, use a very low weight, low impact weight, but do very high reps. So build it up to 15 reps, 20 reps, even 30 reps. If you have imbalances left and right, 
one side is very easy, the other side is really hard to hit that rep range. Perfect. Then you can actually work your way to fixing that imbalance so that both sides are able to do the same reps. If you are very, very weak, so you have this with no weight on and you already get like pain after 10 reps, that's an opportunity to slowly, even slower than for people with healthy wrists, build that up and really take your time. Besides that exercise to improve wrist stability, which addresses muscles that are usually underdeveloped, you of course can take out tension of muscles that are overdeveloped with stretches like this. The wrist flexor stretch, your biceps should be facing forward, palms should be facing backwards, and you lean back on your wrist. If this is too tough, just start with basic hand placed forward wrist leans. Slowly go into that. There's also a place for wrist extensor stretches, also with the bicep facing forward, but this one's a little bit more tough on you, usually. If you want to see more in-depth free tutorials on this kind of stuff, check out my Instagram. There I post videos on this kind of stuff, helping with calisthenics, wrist injuries, wrist pain, elbow pain, shoulder pain, and skill tutorials all the time, daily uploads. Check it out. But for today, let's continue with my own training, Statics Every Day, episode two. I decided to make this video today because usually I would do a weekend overview, but since this is just the second episode, I wanna do a little bit more, hence, why I'm doing a single one for just today's mobility work and prehab work. What we're starting with is the easiest forward fold. So just touching my toes, warming your hamstrings up a little bit because the seated forward fold and standing forward fold are mobility drills that I wanna work on. I'll be doing that together with some prehab stuff, external rotation training, grip training, stuff like that. But we're hitting no skills today. Let's go a little bit deeper on it and just relax into the position. Just an active hold. Before we go for working sets, what I really enjoy doing is warming up with some weighted Jefferson curls, but with very low weight. So just a few reps of going down with this, expanding the range of motion, also warming the lower back up a little bit with keeping it straight on some of the reps and round on other reps. I like to do as well because in the past I used to have a little bit of issues or well, quite a lot of issues with my wrists in my left wrist I at least I at least know this I don't know it for certain in the right wrist but in the left wrist two of my wrist bones grew together and that's left me with a lot weaker strength in terms of grip on the left side and also some carpal tunnel syndromes every once in a while. Never on the right side, but very easily on the left. And uh, this is an imbalance that also is visible a little bit in my back, because this, this stuff kind of shoots down the whole way. If the grip strength here is worse, you're gonna use the arm less and the back is stronger. So my left lat is much bigger than the right one. And on the right, since the grip strength is so much stronger, the right arm is a bit more developed, but the right back is less developed. And this kind of left me a little bit imbalanced. It's something that I'm always fighting, but the reason for that is in the wrist bones 
and that's making it a bit it's making it a bit tough to fix but i'm always working on it and i'm just warming in my grip up because the combination of this finger extensor thing that you found there and this grip strength thing there's an exercise where you kind of help the tendons glide a bit more through the carpal tunnel which looks like this and i found that training grip strength with a low weight has a similar effect for me and helps with the nerve tingling Five seconds passive, five seconds active, then a bit of shoulder stretch, and then repeating the same thing again, until I feel loose enough to do longer holds. Adding some hip mobility in the middle of it. By the way, I told you this in the, in the last video as well. If you want to get access to good calisthenics equipment, like these pants, I'm fully equipped today. <laughs> these socks, the parallettes that you always see me use on planche and on reset, these are the best. Go Nation. And you can use my, my code LEVY10, second link in the description to get a discount on all their products. You save some money and you support me as well. I'm always switching it up a little bit with these rotator cuff exercises. You can do weighted kneeling, you can do weighted on the side like this. I would say my strong point is definitely the front lever. What I'm lacking a bit in is uh, actually the flexibility part. Because I actually I am flexible, I do have pretty good V set, but I still lack compression strength. So one skill that I want is the complete seated forward fold. So face between the shins, hands on the ground, and not helping at all. Right now you can you can check from the side. <laughs> I'm close, but not quite there yet. Yeah, it's a bit easier if you start passive and then get into it active, but that doesn't resemble how it would be in a V-sit, so it doesn't count yet. After this I'll be doing a, a few more sets of this active forward fold and the external rotation finishing with the last set. But that's pretty much it for today. In the current statics everyday approach what I do is basically Monday, Wednesday, Friday high volume, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday lower volume and Friday and Saturday are kind of rest and mobility only. 
mobility and flexibility and prehab. So I'm doing something for aesthetics every day. It's just not the principle anymore where I'm doing the same exact thing every day. That works great for unlocking specific skills, but since I'm trying to combine, I'm forced to do more volume because the combos itself are pretty high in volume. That's why I'm doing this. Also gives me a bit more content, a bit more variety. I'll see you on Sunday in the weekend summary. And that's it for me. Cheers.